Hey everyone, I just want to do a quick video to show off my office and toy room. Uh, I'm going to go through and kind of talk about all the stuff that's in there and I hope you guys enjoy it. So without further ado, here we go. All right, this is my office and toy room. As you can see, it is pretty loaded with stuff. Here are my glass cabinets with the majority of my collection inside. I also have a uh, puppy friend. some video game stuff and I'll go through everything in a lot more detail but I just wanted to give a big overview of everything inside the room itself. Alright, so let's start with the entrance above the door, we have my pile of stuffed animals. Some of these are from when I was a kid. Um, some of them are also from the era if I didn't own it when I was a kid. So, kind of see some stuff in there. I got like a pop little stuffed in there. Got a gummy bear. We got some we got a coyote. There's Homer kind of sticking his head out of there. There's Bambi. I think you can see part of the cheat. Um, they're stuffed in there pretty well. Uh, might be a little hard to see some of the stuff in the back. Uh, not too organized, but pretty cool. So going over to the right, we have the Monsters in My Pocket Monster Mountain. Um, I believe this came out with Series 1 of Monsters in My Pocket, but I have um, a lot of Series 2 and some of the super spooky monsters in there. Um, I've had this since it first came out, and it's always been a fun thing to have on my wall. Let's get a little bit closer and see some of the monsters up close. So going underneath Monster Mountain, we have the very popular and famous Masters of the Universe poster. Uh, so we have, here we go, let's brighten it up a little bit. Um, what's cool about this poster is I got this at Comic-Con years and years and years ago. Um, and that was actually an original new stock ruled version of this poster. So it has no creases anywhere and it's in perfect, perfect condition. And it's just gorgeous, gorgeous work. William George, I believe, is the artist. Underneath we have the uh, 60th, 60th anniversary Lego set, which I thought was really fun micro versions of some of the more famous sets. You can see the Black Seas Barracuda miniature is actually on the original Black Seas Barracuda box that I have on the shelf on the wall. And this is from when I was a kid and I see it in the box all these years. Finally had a chance to display it. And also have a little tribute to Toys R Us. Underneath that, we have well, the uh, super fun clear phone. You know, if people might not remember what phones are, but people used to have to dial numbers on a physical phone. Didn't take pictures. We have the Mysteries of the Unknown, the Monsters, Ghosts, and UFOs book, which is super awesome. Some Lego sets I still need to make. We have Jurassic Park, 
Voltron. We have a Ghostbusters Frisbee. Special edition of the uh, Art of Masters of the Universe with the Secret of the Sword DVD set and a original uh, Toys R Us bag. So moving over here, we have a uh, Guy Fox mask from uh, V for Vendetta. Um, this was cast off a screen used original. Um, and behind that we have a stunt hook sword from the movie Hook, with, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Robin Williams. And this was a production made uh, sword that he used as a background prop in that movie. Here we have some prints of uh, two of my favorite movies. On the left we have Jurassic Park, and on the right we have Lord of the Rings. If we go higher up, let's see if I can get some brightness. There we go. We have some Jurassic Park uh, items. In the back we have a Raptor maquette. That's the Horizon model that's been built up. The Horizon models are super famous because they uh, were originally from the Stan Winston molds of um, his maquettes. In the front is a custom painted thrash and throw T-Rex from uh, Jurassic World. Uh, it looks like it used 3D files from the original movie. Um, is my assumption just because the sculpt is so perfect on it. I think it looks awesome. We also have some more Legacy Collection toys in the front. Um, got uh, all four of the humans in the Jeep. And in the back, let's see if we can see this better. We have another Stan Winston um, Horizon model of the T-Rex. This one is kind of in a bronze uh, look. Um, that's pretty fun. These are some of the smaller, I believe it's called Stan and Winston from the, I forgot the name of the studio that makes these, but they have some really cool dinosaur models. and some lunch boxes in the back there. Let's have a little Star Wars tribute. Uh, Jabba the Hutt with some vintage Kenner figures, as well as some older uh, Star Wars Lego sets. The Ad at the uh, uh, Hot Snow Speeder, and in the background you can see the original, original Boba Fett Slave One. Some of the more fun sets that I love. And as we come down, on the bottom over here, we have some Winnie the Pooh stuffed animals. These were from the um, Winnie the Pooh movie that came out in the late 2000s. Um, they're fully articulated with our, uh, armatures inside of them. Um, really, really beautiful pieces. And over in the corner we have Eeyore. There's a Totoro on top of him and a Hobbs. I also see a Maleficent Dragon kind of stuff in that corner too. Which brings us to my comic rack. I always love these in the stores. I uh, look forward to going into a store and seeing what comic books there were or magazines. Um, Famous Monsters of Filmland, Famous Monsters of Filmland, which was a little bit before my time, um, but super awesome, especially if you love classic monsters, Ray Harryhausen, and stuff like that. Nintendo Power, classic. I believe this is the second issue. Star Fox 64, Nintendo Power, and who can forget Disney Adventures? So as we go along to see what else I have in my shelf. We have the uh, Dave Stevens Rocketeer novel, Labyrinth comic book, 
first issue of Toy Fair, which was one of my most favorite magazines. I believe this was the special issue and then the original uh, issue number one. Um, these are my favorite, favorite, most favorite comics or uh, magazines. There's some more Nintendo Powers behind them. You also have uh, some more Nintendo Powers. Famous Monsters. Famous Monsters. 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 I'm a big Ray Harryhausen fan, so I've tried to collect a lot of the Famous Monsters covers that feature his monsters. And some of the original releases of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. The uh, graph of the drawings in these were just amazing. Uh, I believe we have uh, all three volumes here and a couple, and a couple copies. One into the power. Masters of the Universe comic, issue one. And Ninja Turtles magazine. A lot of these were from when I was originally originally mine when I was a kid that I kept stored in storage and finally was able to put them on display. So if we come over to my desk, you can see some stuff I have on the shelves. We got Rick and Ralph, uh, Clock, uh, Lego uh, Droid from Rogue One, and some cool Nickelodeon plushies, Rocco, and the guys from Hot Real Monsters. Coming down, we have a uh, Indiana Jones fedora, um, actually made by the guys who made it for the Crystal Skull movie, um, which is pretty awesome. He's sitting on a, uh, they're called Muppets. Um, they're the only ones that you can make at FAO Schwartz. Uh, and so when we went to FAO Schwartz a couple years ago, my wife and I, we made our own custom Muppet. And they're called Whatnots. And down here we got a couple of Star Trek Next Generation figures. And my workstation computer, a little Lego Ferrari F40. Coming up to behind the computer, we got a Jeffrey from uh, Toys R Us, Popo T Rex, and got some Guardians of the Galaxy. These are all my Marvel Legends. There's a destroyer in the background there. In the front is, uh, I forgot his name, from Hellboy. Um, the Hellboy movie, the second one, I believe. Doctor Doom. Then, um, yeah, Spider-Man back there. Carnage. Black Symbiote Spider-Man, always one of my favorite suits. Wolverine, Figure Arts, uh, Ant-Man, Cable, Deadpool eating a pizza, another Spider-Man, and another Toys R Us, Jeffrey the Giraffe. And it looks like we have a casualty, which sometimes happens with collections like these. We have uh, spider Gwen in there as well. And now we have a bust, or I guess is a full figure of Pinocchio when he uh, is turning into the donkey. This was made by Kevin Kidney and Jody Daly. Um, Disney Big Fig is what they're called. And I just love the sculpt on this guy. It's just so much character. Here I have a couple new figures that I got from a recent uh, convention. In the background I have Pete and Pete, uh, Mr. Tasty with the blue tornado bars, I think they're what they're called. And then uh, Earl from Dinosaurs, Predator, Wolverine. There's uh, Beetlejuice, Dick Tracy, Swamp Thing. We have a Congo Gorilla that I got from one of the Dinosaur Dracula boxes. And in the back, we have some aliens. I love Kenner, as you can see. Kenner and Playmates. Toy as well, I can't leave them out. 
coming down here. Underneath my desk hiding, we have Wally, as well as some grand based books, some of my favorites. And Amalia, 11th Hour, and Discovery of Dragons. So, over here in this little corner, we have this really cool Castle Grey Skull print I got years ago, Gallery 1988. Uh, which is a gallery in Los Angeles. Down here we have a mon uh, My Pet Monster, G.I. Joe Whale, and a Nerf Max Force Gun. I used to use all the time for those Nerf fights you have with your kids. So you can see the John Hammond King from Jurassic Park. To the top, we also have an original cell uh, of Mr. DNA from Jurassic Park. When we get to the top shelf here, we have the William Ghostbusters Firehouse, as well as a terror dog and Stay Pup Tango in the background there. So let's go shelf by shelf and you can see what some of the stuff I have on these shelves are. Got an intruder from Twilight Zone, Bad Robot, the Hatbox Ghost. Down there is the uh, Everlasting Gobstopper, the Pick of Destiny in the front. We have the uh, top from Inception, Grape Soda from Up. I have a couple signatures in there as well. That's from Clint Eastwood that I met when he was at his restaurant. And also have Billy Joel that I got. I met him in uh, Australia years ago, just randomly at a restaurant. And in the back there, you can see the tomb gun from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Coming down, we have the Indiana Jones case. That's a Toys McCoy in the Anna Jones back there. I know that Hot Toys and Sideshow have all made their versions, but the Toys McCoy one, he was just kind of one of those first of the high-end, very detailed figures, and he might not be the perfect sculpt, but I think he has character, and he's always been my favorite. Oops. There So here's some more props from Indiana Jones. We have the uh, Indiana Jones Adventure. Uh, kind of that tells you what the runes mean in the ride. I got those when I first ran, when the ride first opened to Disneyland. In the front, we have the Cross of Coronado, the Grail, Holy Grail, the uh, Idol from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark as well as the Staff of Raw Headpiece. We have one of the um, pens from the Knights of the Crucifer Sword. There's a Grail Diary, and this is the package that it came in, back there in the corner. And kind of tucked away in the back is the Silver Monkey from the, uh, oh, something's done on my computer. Like I was saying, that's the, the Silver Monkey from uh, the Legends of the Hidden Temples kind of hiding out back there. So coming down, we have some Lord of the Rings uh, items. Let's see, let's get there we go. We have the uh, red Book of Westmarch, I believe is what it's called. This is a custom-made leather-bound book of all the writings of uh, Bilbo and Frodo and Sam. This is where you see them writing in during the movies. Also, I have a quill and an ink quill. A scroll that just kind of looked good with, its, with the shelf. A copy of The Hobbit back there. You can also see the uh, one ring hanging from the book. This is from Jens Hansen, who made the rings for the movie direct from New Zealand. Down here, um, I visited New Zealand a couple years ago and got some collectibles from Weta. There's a copper made Weta bug itself. 
and some keychains and some chainmail armor that you can see. Also threw a couple Goonies props in this. It just kind of worked together. They had that same kind of aesthetic. They have the Goonies coin and the um, copper bones. And back there you can see a pipe, some more chainmail, and an uh, elven brooch. Coming down here, let's get the lighting better. We have my Jurassic Park shelf. See a Jurassic Park comic back there. Um, some of the uh, maps or the park pamphlets that you see in the first movie. Obviously the um, night vision goggles, these are made by Rilo. Um, he also made the, new, the ones you see for Chronicle Collectibles. In the back there, you also have the Barbasol can. And a lot of the things you see around here, like for actual real pieces of uh, amber that have actual mosquitoes and the like inside of them. Hard to see with this camera, but there you can kind of see. Also have a replica Velociraptor hook. There's a Megalodon tooth as well, that's real. Coming down to this shelf. This is the kind of the Back to the Future tribute shelf. You can see one of the old DeLorean time machine toys. This one rolls around, makes noise. You can see the sports almanac in the background. You got Mr. Fusion off in the corner. And then I also kind of threw in some of the stuff that I thought was nostalgic to me that was from that older time. We got a Blockbuster video back there. We have Pepsi Perfect, my old Blockbuster uh, membership card, Toys R Us membership card. We have the uh, uh, cassette player, Talkboy FX Plus, even some pods and stuff, which is kind of fun. Coming down to this bottom shelf, we have a really cool 12 inch scale uh, cosmonaut, a Doctor Who diary in the background, Haunted Mansion, Oregon, a Squant, I believe is what they're called, vinyl figure, and a kind of fun Chewbacca um, plush guy in the front there. So if we go over to the top here, you can see some Star Wars helmets. Obviously we got the Stormtrooper and Luke's helmet. Going further over, let's brighten this up a little bit. We have a uh, a Triceratops, which is from the movie One Million Years BC. This is a cast of the actual model used in the movie. Let's see, let me get it right up there. You know. Which is really awesome. In the background there we have the Yimmer from uh, 20 Million Miles to Earth. This was not a direct cast, but a uh, 3D scan and copy from the original model that Ray Harryhausen made. And over in the middle, we have King Kong. This was made from uh, the original armature from the movie. Um, I believe it's in uh, uh, Bob Burns' collection. So going over to this shelf, this is my Lego uh, kind of shelf. It's one of my favorite Lego pieces. Let's, let's break this up, there we go. So in the background, you can see a Lego Spireus box. Um, in the front, we have some uh, of the 
uh, Lego ideas. This was my first Lego set right there, the guy in the blue. There's uh, Stephen Hawking sitting there. One of my old knight figures. These are Comic-Con, uh, Batman and Robin. Spirius Robot. And Comic-Con uh, Superman. Ooh, let's get the color on there, baby. There we go. There we go. You can see how Abe Lincoln is riding a raptor. And there's uh, Ron and Harry in their flying car in the back, as well as a uh, Jurassic Park Explorer. That's a uh, Jurassic World set. Here in the front, you can see uh, Doc and Marty. Back there, I have a custom made uh, Winnebago with a uh, Walter White from Breaking Bad sitting on top. Also, a really cool Lego set they made a couple years back the villain in his mech. And you can also see my original Lego Builders Club. And in the front here, you can see, let's get this. There we go. Some of my Lego minifigures. Custom made Ash I made a couple years ago. That Groot and Rocket in the back as well as the Milano sitting up there. Coming down to this shelf. The focus in there, there we go. Kind of see, starting in the back, we have uh, Max Ray from <laughs> Centurions. We also have a Voltron back in there, original uh, uh, Megatron, some Legends of Cthulhu. From Warp, I love those guys. Hope they make more stuff. I haven't seen them around in a while. Some more original Transformers. Yeah, what a G1, G2. There's the Blue Grimlock. Yeah, the Atomic Robo and Doctor Dinosaur. There's some stuff from Star Tours. Back here we have Rocketeer and in the back there some Silver Hawks. More stuff from the uh, Star Tours, Pizza Planet car, some minifigures from Captain EO. Also from Disneyland. Sorry about the lighting. Got a Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit. Some back there, Dinosaur Dracula. There's some more Silver Hawks. Let's come around to the center side here. We have a uh, mask car. There's also this one. Some in the background, 50 cent shiny. So in the back there, if you can kind of see, we have Max Rebo in the band. A couple more here. There's a Samurai Pizza Cat. We have uh, The Simpsons. There's Cow and Chicken. Also, uh, Griffey from Gummy Bears. And a mask guy, Goku, because you have to have a Goku. Looks like Iron Man's drunk again off of Duff. Back in there, you can see Cops and Crooks. That's apes. 
is uh, Hulk Hogan. The front here, sitting in his kit is Michael Knight from Knight Rider. On top of Kit is another Samurai Pizza Cat. This is one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. It's hard to see back there, but there's a copy of Coven on VHS. Now that's a pretty obscure reference um, from the movie uh, American Movie with Martin Borchardt. Check it out if you haven't seen it. I'm sitting there in front of uh, Knight Rider, a couple minifigures, as well as Battle Beasts. And behind them is some GI Joe's. We have the fridge. And there's a Captain Power guy hiding back. Captain Power guy hiding back in there. Some more GI Joe's. Yeah, uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a So going down to this shelf. This is the little Ghostbusters section. These are all my original real Ghostbusters figures from when I was a kid. With Randy Ghoul, Pierce and the Flush, all for Ghostbusters, a couple of the Freight guys in the front. You can see the uh, Ecto 1 back there. Ghostbusters cereal box. There's a fright feature still in the box back there. Also, the uh, the bug was always a favorite. Pretty cool. It's the Mantis Bug Ghost. Can of ectoplasm. Ecto 2 is back there. The mailman ghost. The linebacker and a couple of the monsters. You can also see the giant um, wedges of Cthulhu from Morpho on the back. It just works so perfectly with the rest of these figures. Move over to this other side. We have, some, we have a Mighty Max guy back there. Mighty Max is one of the best. We have also some Dino Riders. And some more monsters in my pocket. The Dickmodakis from Dino Riders. Triceratops. In the back there is uh, the Dino Riders. There's a hook. Got a figure still in the package back there. As well as the Power of Grey Skull release from Super 7 of Eldor and then also the hero over here. And don't forget the Great White from Shark Bites. So, coming down to this next shelf, we have some Beast Wars figures. There we go. Beast Wars was an amazing show, all through uh, CG, kind of ahead of his time if I have to say so. And this is a mix of the original releases as well as some of the newer figures. So we have like the original Dinobot there in the front. And then I think that's the Henkai Dinobot released a couple years ago, sitting behind them. A um, little Waspinator and Rat Trap, as well as Black Arachnia. And then there's the original uh, Tarantulas back there. There's the original Waspinator. Scorponok. I believe that was one of those third party, one of the first third party Transformers, which I thought was really cool. We have a custom head on uh, Inferno, which I thought was perfect. The big guy himself, Optimus Prime. And Power Master Optimus Prime. And sitting in the front there in front of Tigatron is some McDonald's changeables. 
weapons. There's your technical transformers. And there's vanilla ice hanging out in the background. Coming over to this other side, we have the Masters of the Universe section. This is really only a fraction of the Masters of the Universe figures I own, but they're some of my favorite figures, and I kind of wanted to give a cross-section of the ones I like the best. But first, I don't want to forget, off in this corner, kind of hard to see, is some Rock Lords. So going through the He-Man figures, Back right there, we have Scareglow. Let's get the focus. There we go. And Trapjaw, Skeletor. I don't need to name them all, but an idea. There's a Stratos still in the box I found at a flea market years ago. I got the stands for these guys off of Etsy. I thought they were really great. They're really unobtrusive, and they hold the figures really well, because some of these guys are kind of hard to stand. King Rangor kind of hiding off back in the corner. And in the front there we have He-Man on Battle Cat. This is my Original He-Man, original Bat-A-Cat. A lot of these were my original from when I was a kid. And we have Skeletor. Riding on Panther. We also have this weird little He-Man that I think was from a stamp or something that I've had for a very long time and I thought it was pretty cool. So coming down to the bottom shelf, some of the larger figures. There we go. As you can see in the background, there's Vehicle Voltron next to uh, Galactus. There's uh, Malbolgia from Spawn. We have a tree beard. In the front here, we have the. Uh, it's the, uh, oh well, it's the uh, uh, Inspector Gadget. Wow, I couldn't remember that for some reason. Well, the Dinobot, Lion Voltron, the original sound wave down here. Something like that, jet fire. And the big green guys. Tendril for the Inhumanoids. We move to this other side. In the background, you can see uh, Apocalypse. We have a Sentinel, the big chap alien. Uh, from the 70s. One of the coolest alien figures in my opinion. A lot of myth and controversy surrounding this figure as being too scary for kids. Also have one of the best figures ever made. It's the Bigfoot from Six Million Dollar Man. Essentially just a big hairy naked guy. <laughs> a couple more uh, and humanoids. So, uh, Leech from He Man. Um, Sweden's from the Muppets. So, yeah. 12 inch Vader. Courtesy Retro Blastic. And my original childhood Castle Grey Skull. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we have the uh, Sorceress up on the top. Down here on the floor. Next to the Cobra Whale, we have Star Trek or Starship Enterprise uh, D from uh, Next Generation. Next to the Macross VF1. And 
the Batmobile. This is from the original Kenner run, one of the best Batmobile toys, I think, in my opinion. Also have a couple Legos on the bottom from Ice Planet, one of the cooler series. Coming up from there, got a couple of deep sea divers, Stitch, and some Mickeys, Mickey Mouse. These are all Medicom toys. Really love the sculpts on these guys. Here we have one of the best play sets ever released. The Playmobil hobo being woken up by a police officer on the bench. Also, a pirate and a ghost pirate. Lego Wally. Ant Man, including a very, very tiny Ant Man action figure. Mickey and Oswald. Which leads us to this top shelf. We have uh, Tag Telos from Jason and the Argonauts, Ray Harryhausen. We have a Boba Fett helmet. And Darth Vader, who is smiling. And the Rocketeer. So this right here is my little tribute to a Toy Fair magazine. I have all the major characters, including Spider-Man eating a bag of ladies' potato chips, The Thing, Incredible Hulk, Doctor Doom. As you can see really closely, looks like Iron Man is a little too much to drink. Black Suit Spider-Man and the Fonz. Those are Mego action figures. The uh, Doctor Doom and the Black Suit Spider-Man are custom made. Have the original run of uh, The Simpsons with Bart. Some more Mighty Max. Officer, oh no, was it, what was his name? Uh, from McDonald's. Officer Big Mac, that's what it was. And a uh, couple figures from Lilo and Stitch. In the back here, we have a, a couple more uh, Masters of the Universe classics. There's the Wonder Bread He Man, Wondar, whatever they called him. A, a He Man, and also a Scared Glow, one of my favorite figures they released. Gonna have the 2000X He Man. In the front here, next to Stinkor. In the back, we have a McFarland Toys a Headless Horseman, and then the Four Horsemen um, figures in the behind him. There's this weird, uh, very tall hook Peter Pan action figure. I believe it's a bootleg, but it's based off the smaller toys. So that's kind of cool, and there's Captain Hook next to him. That big green guy is a custom-made uh, figure from uh, He-Man.org, the slime pit monster. And there's a ha uh, Happy Meal toy. Uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name from um, Tiny Toon Adventures. Coming over to the side, there's another look at that hook figure in the background, and there's a uh, the, the crow figure. Here in the front there's a uh, zombie spawn, regular spawn. I also have a couple more Happy Meal toys. There's Bambi, and also some vinyls from All Dogs Go to Heaven. Also, some really cool hot, uh, Hellboy figures. DC Comics Superheroes case. Maybe this one in the background, the Max. And 
it's not what it's there, but there is another spot here. It's reasonable, Scrooge and Blue. So coming down here, we have a leopard in the corner. There's a bootleg Silver Hawks. In front of more McDonald's toys. And here's some DC and Marvel superpowers. Um, yeah, not bad, man. Also in the background, you can see Megatron and Optimal, or Optimus Prime. Optimus Primal, I'm sorry. I love this Batman toy line. All the suits were ridiculous. And there's the original release back there with Robin. In the front here, we have some Z-Bots. I remember Z-Bots. A couple Micro Machines. There's a Carnage. Uh, kind of alien hanging out there. Anybody watches uh, Pixel Dan, there's Spider Blue, Spider Blue, Spider Blue. He's so blue, 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 blue. There's uh, another Beast Wars figure, the Mammoth. Beast Wars Neo, I believe. Also hiding out is a couple figures from uh, the Police Academy toy line. Let's come over here. In the background, we have a dragon from the Visionaries. A couple of Godzilla figures I got in Japan. Another Visionaries toy. And here's some Hulk figures. A lot of these guys are really hard to find. some really weird variants. I believe they're only European releases are very limited here in the US. There's Learn to Fly Peter Pan, so it's an action figure of Robin Williams without a shirt on with a happy face painted on his chest. There's the food fighting pan. Dead butt. And Rufio. In front of them we have some micro machines. Gumby and Pokey, Space Ghost and Brack, Sloth from the Goonies, and a couple, a couple of Simpsons figures in the background there. And don't forget uh, Isagi and Jimbo. So there's some Star Stargate guys, which I really like that toy line. Coming down here, we have our Jurassic Park shelf. Let's fix the lighting here. There we go. So we have the, the red Rex from Jurassic Park, the bull Rex in the background, Carnotaurus, the gates to the park, Utah Raptor I found at Goodwill. Bone Age. Where was Bone Age? Alien from Kenner on the shelf. A ridiculous uh, T Rex I had when I was a kid. It looks like he put his lipstick on without even looking in the mirror. Gives me remnants of uh, Buffalo Bill and uh, Sounds of the Lambs. Some raptors. Those are the raptor squad. Also, we have the uh, for explorer and a cool little dinosaur Hot Wheel I had when I was a kid. Here's the demon Carnotaurus. Willow in the background, you can also see the flying alien queen back there. My boy Blue. 
really cool variant of a Dilophosaurus red. I thought it was pretty cool. Alamimus, as well as some Power Rangers. Thundercats color forms in the background and a Terminator from Kenner in the background there as well. So that's the Jurassic Park shelf. Coming down here, we have the Ninja Turtles. These are all of my original Ninja Turtles, none of these were bought later. Um, I almost got rid of them numerous times over the years, but I'm so happy I kept them. And the original soft head releases I got when I was a kid, and all the turtles. Same with the bad guys, Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder, Foot Soldier. There's Baxter, and a lot of my favorites are on this one. The shelf, there's an April in the background. Saigi and Jumpo figure signed by Stan Sakai. There's a androids or a brain, a Krang's android body. A watch I had when I was a kid. And I can also see a, how cool is that purple uh, wallet. I used to use that wallet all the time. Coming over here, you can see the uh, NECA turtles. These are not the bootlegs. I got these when they first came out. They're really rad. Standing on top of the turtle van, which is being driven by a couple of the uh, movie star turtles. You can see Michelangelo and Donatello over to the left there. And here are some Thundercats. These are all my originals when I was a kid as well. Thunder Tank, all the main guys. I was lucky enough to have uh, uh, Jaga and Bengali and a couple of the Heart of, Heart of the Finals as well. So coming down, we have part two of our Ninja Turtle shelves. We have the Techno Drill. Got a couple boxes in the background there. Oops. And a couple more figures. Some of these are like the transforming figures, which are pretty rad. And there's the bee. Also, you can see in the background, we got Mondo Gecko, the pizza thrower, the turtle blimp. I have the blimp part, but of course, it wouldn't fit in the shelf. And the Technodrome is connected to the sewer playset. We have a gorilla hanging off of the wires up there. Nice and some of the more trans some of the transforming turtles here. Splinter in the background. It's got soggy hanging out as well. Coming down to the bottom, down here on the floor. A couple of Lego sets that look pretty cool. There's the uh, Red Bird Lego Technic or Lego uh, Model Team set. I've had that since I was a kid, it's beautiful. And uh, Transformer, Mighty and Falcon, original Kenner. A couple more bigger figures, we have the Gremlin. Teddy Rockspin BB-8, a Porg, Kiwi, there's that old uh, giant Godzilla with a tongue that sticks out, and Firing Fist, Stitch. And so let's come up to the, up here, let's go as we go up, we got a uh, Super Super 50, Here's some original cells. These are original from the Samurai Pizza Cats. DuckTales. He-Man. He-Man. 
And up there is Lionel from the Thundercats. So coming over to this final shelf, we have the uh, Lego Haunted House, TGRI canister over to the right. And coming down, we have some Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a replica helmet, some Groots that are pretty awesome, and an original Sony Walkman that works. There's some Hellboy props. There's the big giant metal uh, Samaritan gun. The uh, skull is actually a screen used prop from the movie as well as the tarot card. I can get it to the, there we go, in the background there. The reliquary is um, made by the guy who made it from the movie. It's not screen used, but it's made by the same creator. And we have a tiki from the Brady Bunch. Also, there's a G.J. Abrams mystery box. I wonder what's inside there. Coming down here, we have the hook from the movie Hook. This isn't an original prop of the hook, but it's made from lineage to the actual movie, and it's all metal. It's also the Labyrinth book, and an awesome Jules uh, Verne book in the background there. A lot of these coins that the hook is on, sitting on top of are screen used from the movie. A lot of these were obtained um, from the maker who used them in the movie. Um, and the coin, uh, they're sitting on top of a pile of coins that were used for um, large piles of coins. It seems like a big uh, casting of coins, but the metal ones sitting on top that are shinier. Screen used from the movie. We also have a uh, piece of eight from Pirates. That's the uh, Dakota pin from Christmas Story and the raw pendant from Star Wars. Moving down to this shelf is kind of my Disneyland uh, Chris Sanders tribute shelf. I love Chris Sanders artwork style. And I'm in Disneyland. So as you can see, there's quite a number of his sketchbooks and they're all signed and they got uh, Comic-Con. There's an original bronze that he made. So a bronze of the um, pirate from the Pirates of the Caribbean. An original Disneyland program. Some more signatures. And some Club 33 merchandise that I got when I went to Club 33 years ago, uh, a couple years ago. Going down here to uh, Harry Potter. You can see the uh, some golden snitch that actually opens in the front. A lot of these are from Harry Potter World. We have the Birdie Bots beans, Chocolate Frog, a couple of replica books and wands, as well as the uh, Tom Riddle Diary and the Skelegro. Coming down to the bottom shelf. There's Johnny Five from Short Circuit. The Mr. Babadook book. Replica good gun from Star Wars, Han Solo's blaster. And that's actually a uh, screen used hat from Hook during the baseball scene. So we're coming across to over here. We have a Rancor monster. And up on the wall, we have a Mickey Mouse Club clock. I've had a bunch on my wall since I was a little kid. Batwing, Slave One. Coming down to some Game Boy tribute and Super Nintendo and Nintendo stuff. Sitting up there is Oswald. There I am, hello. And this guy is one of my pride and joys. It's a screen used sword from the movie Hook. As you can see, there's a slit right there. This is the stab version of the sword. 
not many really would have used this during the movie. While he, when he showed stabbing anybody during one of the fights, the sword collapses in on itself to create that stab type effect. This was verified by the uh, prop maker from the movie, Certificate of Authenticity, um, one of my prized possessions. Hook. And coming down here is my video game shelf. As you can see, I got quite a few Nintendo. There's some Dreamcast and uh, uh -oh. how did that guy get in there? You know, talk about that guy. Super Nintendo. Genesis. Nintendo 64. GameCube. PlayStation 2. Some Xbox. 3DS and DS. And Wii. On the bottom here we have a couple more dinosaurs. John Hammond. Coming up, just a couple random little things, a couple of fun little uh, uh, cans of soda, some PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 games, Zelda and Star Fox, signed Leonard Nimoy uh, card, 3DS box, and a couple more boxes. And that is my toy room and office. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see more of. Take care. Bye.